Okay, in this video, we want to start to build out the model that we're going to use for our API. And, you know, we're going to create this API. And I sort of mentioned it earlier, it's going to be a list of my courses. And it'll have like the course title, it'll have the type of course it is. So it teaches Ruby, it teaches PHP, it teaches JavaScript, whatever language it teaches. And then it'll have like the price, and we might add some other stuff. But each of those things needs to be saved into the database, so that we can then serve it up as an API to other people later on on the website. So to do that, we start out, it's actually incredibly simple. We just go to inside of our courses directory, find our, our models.py file. And you can see there's nothing in there now. We can get rid of that comment. And now we just need to start building out a class for our, our model. So we just type in class and then name it. So I'm gonna name this course, because it's gonna be courses. You tend to generally wanna name your model singular. So instead of naming it courses, because then later on you'll see like courses because later on Django pluralizes it in certain things. So we want to do it singular here. So inside of here, we want to pass models dot model. And then we just define the things that we want to save. So I'm going to create a, a name. We want to create a course name, uh, the programming language. And then let's just go price for now, right? So three fields, we can beef this up later on if we want to. But here we just go models dot and then define the data type. And this is gonna be a car field, uh, which stands for character fields. If you're interested in the different data types, just, just Google like Django data types or SQL data types, um, things like that. We're using right now the SQLite database that comes with Django. So you could, I guess, um, well, you probably wanna Google Django data types. But anyway, car field, that's a normal one. And inside of here, we wanna pass max underscore length and set that equal. Now notice when I did this, it kind of changed. And this kind of looks like a capital L, but it's not, it's a lowercase L. So it puts a little hook on the bottom of it. I don't know why, it's just sublime does that. So make sure that's lowercase. And we want the max length to be, I don't know, 200 characters, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Now for each of these things, uh, we can do the same thing for here. 100 characters is probably enough. And for here, let's go the price, let's go 10. And the length of that is like the characters. So like, if I put the price as $49, that's three characters, one, two, three. If I go 49.99, right? That's one, two, three, four, five, six characters. If I go 149, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven characters. So the max we want is 10. I guess I could put seven, but it really doesn't matter. Back in the old days, it was important to map out how many characters your database used because back in the old days, uh, computer space was very limited and memory was very limited. So these days, it really doesn't matter. You don't even have to do this probably, but we just do. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So we can save this. And that's really all there is to it. Our model is now done. Now we have to make a migration and then push the migration into the database and we're pretty much good to go. So let's head over to our terminal and I'm gonna control C to break out of the server. And we just go python manage.py make migrations. And anytime you're doing database stuff, and it's not just Django, it's anything else really, Ruby on Rails, anything, Database things are always a two-step process. You make your migration and then you push your migration into the database. That's just sort of how it works. So here we're typing this python manage.py file make migrations. And what that does is it takes this file we just created with this class and sort of converts it into database language, right? That's what a migration is. So it's done that now. So now we just need to push that migration into the database, push that list of database language stuff into the database. And to do that, we just go python manage.py migrate. And you remember we did this at the very beginning of the course when we pushed in the admin area migration. Okay, so that looks like it worked. So now let's go python manage.py run server to run our server again. And let's head back over to our admin section and hit reload. And let's log out and log back in. 
And when we do, it looks like nothing has changed because we haven't associated our new database stuff with the admin area. So we'll go ahead and do that in the next video.